This is the Horse Radio Network. We could all use a kick in the butt every now and again when it comes time to tackle a deep clean. This week, we're talking to a super groom on finding the motivation to tidy up the barn. We'll also share our favorite rest and recovery techniques for after horse shows. Thanks for tuning in. From Heels Down Mag, a podcast where horse pros chat about what's happening in the horse world over drinks. Welcome Welcome to Happy happy Hour. hour. I'm Justine Griffin. I'm Jessica Payne. And I'm Ellie Wozniaka. Welcome to episode 75 of Heels Down Happy Hour. How's it going, everybody? Hey. Justine, is it finally starting to like get cooler? Like it's so nice here finally. It's finally fall, like my favorite season. It kind of like smells like the, you know, smoke and stuff like you could do a fire. Or are you still hot down there? No, we're actually, so we're getting our first cold front literally as we speak. Like tomorrow, it's supposed to wake up and be nice and cool. I'm really excited. Yeah. (laughs) So when you say cold front. Oh, we're not talking like you. We're not talking like you. We're talking about like what you had six months ago. (laughs) Oh, yes. Yeah. We're talking like nice where you put like a nice little sweater on and you could still have shorts, but it's like lovely kind of weather. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Like we're talking about like 80 degree highs with lows in the 60. (laughs) (laughs) Like, Justine and I are on the same page. We're like, oh, it's chilly. We're like, you know, don't sweat through all of our first layer of clothes at five minutes later. Exactly. You guys, I've already had a first frost. So, no, no. See, we're not talking. That's why I specifically didn't ask you, Ellie, because I knew you're just on a different level that I just can't handle. Yeah, my horses are starting to get puffy. No. Not a good sign. The puff has begun. The puff has begun. Hi, my name is Jackie Brooks, and I ride on the Canadian Olympic team in dressage. And I want to talk today about how much I love the EcoGold flip pad in mat. It is awesome. And I don't know how many people have used half pads under their saddles, but for me, either they've been too thick and you feel like you're like way above the horse, or too thin. And of course, then you feel like you're sitting in the horse, but they're not effective. And this Eco Gold flip pad, I tell you, it's the first one I felt like in the places where there's the most pressure, that it is perfect at uh, getting you close to the horse. You don't feel like you're above, but still protecting their back. And you definitely feel like the horse has a lot more ability to take your weight and for it to be comfortable for them. You're close to them, but their backs are protected. So I highly recommend if you don't have, if you're struggling with a saddle or you're struggling with saddle fit or you're struggling with your half pad, order this flip half pad. It's awesome. You guys can get your own at ecogold.ca. And Ellie, since we're talking about fall and the smell of it, I hear you have like the perfect fall drink for us. I do. And it's, and it's simple, which is what I, what I like. And it's got ice cream, which makes everything better. So it's a pumpkin beer float. Mm. So to make one float, you need three scoops of vanilla ice cream, one cup of pumpkin ale and half a teaspoon of cinnamon. You scoop the ice cream into a glass, pour over your ale and then top with your cinnamon. That sounds awesome. I would never think to use a beer for something like this, like a root beer float type thing. But that sounds pretty good because I'm a big I'm a big fan of pumpkin beers. Yeah, they're I mean, that's definitely my favorite part of fall in terms of like seasonal drinks are the pumpkin beers. Mm hmm. So but are you guys like pumpkin spice latte people? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, but, okay. See, I can't do any. <laughs> I love pumpkins. I love pumpkin seeds. I love all of that for fall. But I can't do the pumpkin ale. And I can't do the pumpkin spice, like latte spice. Oh, my God. Like, this really is like. Flavor. I know. The one, I'm like. The one the thing I'm like really basic about is the pumpkin spice. Like when it comes out <laughs> in August, I'm there and like going to get it. <laughs> so, <laughs> No, I like pumpkin ales and I like pumpkin pie is like one of my all time favorite things. Um, But for some reason, like I like the pumpkin spice donuts. I can get behind those. But the lattes, I mean, I'm not a big coffee drinker anyway. So why don't you like it, Jess? Like, what is it that you don't like? 
uh, but I'm not really like a hit. I don't like any kind of flavor is the problem. Oh, like I'm kind of real basic. So it's not the pumpkin is the problem. It's that's just, something else like additional flavor. Yeah. I can gosh. do vanilla and that's like stepping outside my box, like vanilla <laughs> creamer type thing. But like, yeah, no, no. I mean, I don't know if you could do this with a gin. I don't think it would taste very good. <laughs> no, no, no. So maybe it's I just, not for I'll sub mine. I'll do it like with like a Coke float type thing and pretend okay. it's got alcohol. There you go. Yeah, sometimes pretending works. <laughs> <laughs> not really. I'll just stick with my wine and be okay. <laughs> so Jess, so, I hear you have an update on the Olympics for us. I do. It's, you know, we're all still hoping the Olympics is going to happen in 2021 and what it's going to kind of be, but they did just release that the IOC coordinated like this whole meeting with the Tokyo 2020 organizing committee. And they had a series of measures to make sure that the Olympics in Tokyo would fit like post Corona world. So it's pretty interesting. They went and they developed a response to the postponement of the games And they had over 50 measures that have been designed to maximize cost and savings and increase the efficiency in the games. So basically they went to make sure they went to like their stakeholders and everybody to make sure that they could still run the games and they're going to try to keep it to measures, whatever this post Corona is going to be. So fingers crossed, I'm sure there's going to be 25 million meetings from now till then, but you know what? Good news is we are not seeing 2020 Tokyo, which will be 2021, but, you know, technically the Olympics is 2020. So hopefully we will not see the big cancel that they're going to try to run it. So there are, there are some big events running and everything. So we're going to fingers crossed. That's going to kind of, I think, see how all this plays out, how they're going to get a lot of these big horse shows going and start to do more international shows. So I think, Like I said, fingers crossed that they're going to start to be able to figure out a way to be able to hold the Olympics, that it might look a little different and it might be kind of crazy, but we'll stay tuned because, you know, I mean, there are so many athletes and horses that are ready and, you know, that's what Doug and I work every day to hope that some of the horses will be ready. So fingers crossed we're actually able to have it. I really hope so. I mean, just from a spectator's standpoint, I mean, it's even if you can't go. Yeah. Just to see it, you know, as a spectator, like I will tell you, I obviously identify with watching the summer Olympics more than I do like, you know, more mainstream sports, but the, um, the NHL just wrapped up and Tampa won the Stanley cup. And it was just like it, it, you know, this whole year has sucked, but it, for this moment, for this, like today, you know, they're basking in their win and the whole city is just like electric behind it. And it's just, it is like the one good thing that has happened this year, you know? So I think about the Olympics and that, you know, horse people, we just need a break, like to watch, to watch the best compete on a live stream or TV. I mean, that would just bring my anxiety level down, you know, like, I just feel like people need it. You need the the stories of the Olympics, if that makes sense. No, I 100%. So fingers crossed they can figure this out. What about you, Ellie? Well, so with all my wildlife issues, <laughs> with the groundhogs, and I mean, it's an adjustment, which I didn't really count on in Pennsylvania, but I found this article on what to do if your horse gets skunked, Ew. which I'm lucky that I haven't had to deal with this. But Matt's horse did attack a porcupine, and I had to pull quills out of his face and his chest. Gosh. Um, oh, my gosh. So, I mean, Matt's horse, I mean, he chases after deer if they come in the pasture. He's, I don't know what's wrong with him. Wow. Yeah, he's weird. But um, do you have skunks where you live? Like, are the, do they live there? Yes, they do. So I actually saw some baby skunks the other day, and I was like, oh, my God, they're so cute. But I'm like, oh, no, they're going to smell so bad. <laughs> so... This came into my head because I saw a fox with a lot of mange the other day. And I was like, how do I trap this fox and treat it for mange? And Matt's like, why are you even bothering? And I'm like, because I feel bad. But in any case, um, if your horse gets skunked, I guess that the best way to do it, it's kind of similar to what you would do for a dog. 
So hydrogen peroxide, baking soda, and Dawn dish soap. Um, you just make a mix and kind of hope for the best. But, oh, I couldn't. That's, a, that's one smell I don't think I can handle. So, uh, yeah, I couldn't even begin to, no. like, if my barn manager texts me, like, hey, so Mikey got hit by a skunk. You got to come clean <laughs> him. I, like, I wouldn't know, what, like, even where to begin. Yeah. <laughs> So they do say, like, you know, recommending, obviously you can't, you know, fully get rid of all skunks in your area, you know. Um, but the best way is obviously, like, you know, what we know for a lot of, you know, rodent type animals, you know, keep your food in rodent proof containers for, you know, like your grain and stuff like that. You know, don't leave cat or dog food out at night um, and then secure your trash, which I have to do anyway because I have bear. But, oh, Yeah. I mean, they don't really do anything. I mean, you know, but skunks, no thank you. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'll take the porcupine quills over the skunk. Justine, what do you have? So over the weekend, I attended the Eco Gold Dressage Symposium, um, which I know, you know, we had Jackie on the show a couple weeks ago to talk more about it. And it was so cool. You know, I'm like... um. I consider myself a casual dressage rider uh, <laughs> and obviously low level. Um, but I was just like, I was so hooked on it from the moment it started. And it was like three hours jam packed with super presentations um, from three very talented top pro riders, including Jackie Brooks. And it was awesome. I mean, it was very interactive. They all came prepared with like videos to show. Uh, Alas, Jordan Gunderson, who we've had on the show before too, she did a rideability series where she she kind of like picked apart issues that you know contribute to um, like your overall weaknesses that you would perform in a test or something uh, that really start with behavioral problems, but also just like the basics. And I just I was just blown away by some of the insights they shared. So it was really cool. I really hope Google continues this. You know, I, I think it's something you could do almost all the time now. It doesn't have to be pandemic related. I think people are just interested in learning, right? So yeah, it was it was fabulous. It was very cool. Shout out to everyone who's donated on Patreon. We really appreciate you guys continuing to support us and help us talk about random things like horses getting skunked. Thank you to everyone that contributes. If you want to contribute, go to www.patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash heels down. So guys, I have a very exciting guest. One of my favorite people, uh, the very famous Courtney Carson, who works for us at Pan Equestrian. She has been our barn manager for three years now, right? Four, 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 four. We're going on four <laughs> years. It's been so long. So, but Courtney is originally from St. Louis and she graduated, she graduated with a sports journalism degree in 2015, but she grew up fox hunting pony club and she's actually competed through the intermediate level of eventing. So she kind of knew the ins and outs of what it took to be a top rider with top horses. So it was very nice to kind of have her in that, put her expertise and all of that. And now she goes around the world with us. So welcome, Courtney. Thanks for having me, guys. Long time no see, Jess. Right? <laughs> Whole five minutes, man. Yeah, for those of you, obviously, because you're just listening, they're, they're literally sitting in the same house while we record this right now. <laughs> we thought that it'd be appropriate if she went downstairs, I went upstairs, so we would make each other laugh or echo off of each other. But yes, we are literally not that far. We're like one floor apart. I can still hear her through the ceiling, actually. Pro like probably. being in an apartment building. <laughs> I'm oh, pretty sure yeah. maybe the neighbors might be able to hear me too. And I'm trying to be quiet, <laughs> but it's just my, my voice carries, they tell me. That's what they say. <laughs> that's your excuse, Jess. <laughs> that, that's, I think, them being polite, but we'll go with that. Well, Courtney, it's been like long overdue to have you back on the pod. I feel like you are the most coveted person in the Facebook group. Like if anyone has a question <laughs> that they pose in the Facebook group, they're all hoping that it's going to be Courtney Carson who answers it for them. <laughs> oh, right, gosh. me too. I'm like, oh, hopefully she'll answer it. I don't even know the answer. <laughs> uh. 
So we invited you back because we're hosting, Hillstown Mag is hosting a declutter challenge right now, and we're in the thick of it. It's two weeks long, it's 10 days, and every day, if you're a subscriber to the Hillstown Brief, you get a new challenge. So, so far, it's been like how to clean your brushes, how to clean your moldy tack, like tips from from professional grooms and different ideas to like stay organized and kind of tackle those big projects in the barn that you just, you, you know, it's like looming over your head, like, oh man, I really need to clean this out or else it's just going to keep getting worse. But then you put it off for another six months and it just, just keeps getting worse. Um, and you are probably one of the most organized people I know. I mean, you base, you run a very tight ship. You keep Jess and Doug on schedule, keep all the horses alive. I mean, that's a lot. It's a lot of pressure. Uh, as long as no one looks in my apartment, we're not just going to, we're just not going to talk about that side of it. <laughs> we just close that door. No one noticed. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Oh, that's funny. So I thought we could start with blanket season. We were just talking about how the cooler weather is finally starting to arrive, even here in Florida. And I remember talking to you, I don't know, weeks, months ago about how you like, your year round system for blankets, like how you clean them, how you store them when you put them away for the warmer months, how you bring them back out. And I hear you've got a very coordinated system of how blankets go, you know, bundles go to each horse. So why don't you tell me what your system is and how you stay organized? (laughs) Yeah. um, So we actually, this is kind of perfect because we are just starting to pull out all of our blankets. Um, we've had all of our sheets out for a couple of weeks now. And I literally left, like we had sent all the stuff to North Carolina to the new farm. And then we're still in Aiken, unfortunately. So Doug and Jess brought a trailer load of blankets back. And I looked at the kids and I was like, okay, I'm going to try on for the week and you guys can disperse all of these blankets. And the girl who was there with me at the time, her eyes got like the size of saucers. And I said, no, 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 we're going to take a look. It, it's fine. Like it's not that bad. And so what we've done, um, is I take all my sheets and I tie them up together because typically those stay out the longest and then they come out first because, you know, you get like a 65 degree day where it's raining and you want just your sheet, but your 45 degree days are still three weeks to a month out. So I don't even touch the heavy blankets. But what we do is we'll take like two pieces of bailing twine or if you have a really long piece and you fold the blankets up all nice and neat and stack them and then you kind of crisscross the bailing twine And then go back around and flip the blankets over and go to the bottom and then you can tie them really tight. So, I mean, it would be the equivalent to like how, you know, people would tie old time packages that you would ship. And then I take a piece of duct tape and I fold it back over on itself and it goes around the bailing twine, like how a packing slip would or an airplane checked bag tag. And then I'll write with black Sharpie on piece of duct tape, you know, so it'd be like Quinn rain sheet, quantum rain sheet, Quincy rain sheet. And then that stack goes off in a pile and then you do the next three and the next three. So all my rain sheets are kind of done up like that and I'll do about three horses per stack. And then every horse individually past that, their medium and heavy get tied together. Because typically when your mediums come out, then you need your heavies shortly after that. And so then every horse literally just has a bundle. So when I went into the shed and I showed her, I was like, you just go put these at their stalls and fold them nicely. She was like, oh, this is amazing actually, because she thought she was going to be sorting through blankets for an hour and a half just to find out who we had. Yeah, I'm impressed. (laughs) So how do you clean them, like, you know, at the end of the season, like when you clean them and store them? Do you have any specific method to that? Not really. I mean, we've been really fortunate actually being in Aiken because we don't deal with a lot of the mud. It's a lot of sand, so you can just kind of, like, brush them off really good and then throw them over the fence and kind of pressure wash them. Um, if you need to rewaterproof them, then I will, if we've got one that's getting, you know, horses starting to get pretty soaked through. But yeah, so we've been really, really lucky in that sense. When I was in Illinois and I dealt with the mud, I would actually get the pressure washer for the barn out and hang the blanket, like find a nice day when it was 75, 80 degrees and hang them over our long 16 foot gates and pressure wash them and then let them hang dry. And then I would fold them up and put them away in their you know, special stacks. That's yeah, great. Uh, that was That's honestly the, the only way that I could get it done. <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't tried a power washer yet. I just throw them in my washing machine and Matt gets mad. So <laughs> I <laughs> definitely <laughs> should try that. <laughs> He's like, you're going to break it. But so speaking of cleaning, I 
want to know how you clean helmets or if you even do, I guess, because <laughs> like my head, okay. I ride with a bandana and like, kind of like a do rag type of thing. Not because I'm stylish, although, you know, I like to think so, but in any case I ride with it because my helmet like will get so smelly if I don't like, cause I sweat so much. So how do you clean a helmet? Like, cause we've tried, I've tried the sprays and stuff and what, how, yeah. how do I deep clean a helmet? I mean, honestly, I used to run mine through the dishwasher. No, but we also found a good way. Remember with Doug's cause Doug smells so bad. Let's get real. <laughs> yeah, those are bad. They, they do like you can, they smell, but we started doing, <laughs> remember that same thing, like the shoes, the odor deodorizing yeah. thing. Yeah. And so where did you guys find the shoe one? Because it's the kind of Charles Owen makes like a helmet deodorizer. Honestly, but then I the think it was on Amazon. The best. Yeah, yeah. Or even like if you go to Academy or like Dick's Sporting Goods and you go to their athletic shoe department, they'll have them hanging. And a lot of times they're painted like basketballs or soccer balls or footballs, you know, and they're about the size of a ping pong ball. Um, but they're deodorizers and you could just like chuck those in and leave them hanging for a bit. Or we did the spray too. So you do like the feet one or you can do a spray. Yeah. And we've done both of those. And that's helped like the foot deodorizing or the foot thing because yeah, like between their feet and their helmets, like it was so gross. We were like, (laughs) we've got to start doing something. (laughs) Doug's helmet and my socks could clear out a high school football locker room probably. Pretty much. (laughs) Pretty much. (laughs) But I've heard that the dishwasher I've thing before. Hit Doug's helmets with like scented dry shampoo in the tap yeah. room. And that was before. good yeah. too. That was yeah. good. We did that. <laughs> I'm like, but I the can't. dishwasher thing. I mean, I've heard that before, but th- so you're Courtney, you're thinking like old school helmets, right? Like, do you feel like I, new helmets could hold up? I have not been brave enough to try it with a leather yeah. look helmet just because I mean even though we are very fortunate to be sponsored by Charles Owen, um, I don't have $500 to drop on one if I run it through, but they get rained on. Like, you know, we've ridden in the rain in them and they haven't like shriveled up and gotten gross. We've been too scared to put one in the dishwasher. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the next leather look one that he kills, I'll run it for a test run. And yeah, it happens. Yeah. But the other one, so I know, this kind of you've lately, so we might have to go a little bit old school for everybody else, but we got those awesome trunks. So we travel with these flexi trunks that, um, it's made by flexi tack trunk, I think is the name of it. Yeah, flexi equine tack walkers. Yep. And they're great. And that kind of keeps the tack box a little organized, but what about for all the people that want to organize their tack trunk and everything? Oh, Tupperware yeah. or baskets. Like you got to go, go to the Tupperware department at Walmart or Target or something. And it's, it's my favorite aisle. Oh, that's probably. what I forgot. We did that even for the flexi trunks. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because like our flexi trunk is great and it's got drawers on the one side. And then I'm, I'm very, very crazy about like what goes in at each drawer. But then we had an open space at the top that was small And then another open space underneath the last drawer that was a little bit bigger. And so Jessica and I measured them and it was like, okay, well, what Tupperwares will fit in this? And so she actually found a great little basket and that's like Doug's basket. And it has his cross country watch, his gloves, extra canisters for his air vest, all that kind of stuff is in there. And then like I was able to fit boots and extra packets for our ice vibes and all kinds of stuff in the little box that goes underneath. But then if you said, you know, like you had an old school Husky trunk that has the tray in it and a lot of, you see a lot of eventers with them mm-hmm. and I love them. They're great. I actually have one packed for this week for our poor FEI horse. That's like down in Timbuktu by himself, but anything with a lid on it, because then not only can you stack them on top of each other and a lot of times the lids will have handles. So they're easy to pick up and move, but then you can go back to my favorite duct tape and Sharpie and you can label what's in them for that horse show. So you can do but like, I forgot. A- I did. I did. I went to the store. I totally forgot. I had gone and done this, but I went to this, I went to tar. I went to target. Um, Walmart kind of scares me sometimes. So I went to target and I went to the kind of like where the food place was. So I got a lot of like food type Tupperwares. So I did some bigger ones. So you kind of have to go to a couple different sections to kind of find what I wanted. 
but that's where I found those little cool little double snap ones that we have. And it's got a lid. God, it's got the ones with the snap lids that like actually lock. You can't just, yeah. Get the ones so I did like out. two or three, yeah, two or four sides of the snaps, but I found all kinds of different sizes, but they were actually in the like sandwich, like where you'd find trash bags and stuff like that. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, so like, what's your favorite Tupperware? Like you, but you can get them from Target, Walmart, anything like that. Anything. Just yeah. the ones that have like, like double to be or has a, yeah. anything like that. But they have Got to have it. at least the snap on two sides or the snap on all four sides. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Cause they're great. Cause you could do, you know, so, you know, you think about it, you could do like your polo wraps in one, like a little bit bigger one. Cause you could roll those and kind of squish them. And then you could do like when we went to the Pan Ams, that was the first time I'd used them. And actually all of the competition boots for the mayor fit in like a medium sized one. And so I just knew that that was competition boots. And then, you know, we had like fuzzy boots or whatever and other ones. And then I had a braiding kit one and I have one that just has like electrical tape and a pair of scissors in it. And it's a little one. It's, you know, maybe three inches by two inches by one and a half inch. And But our safety pins too. Yep. Yeah. Safety pins go in one, you know, boot polish goes in one and it has a little rag in it. Like you can do as many of them as you want, depending on, you know, the size that you have. And even same thing in the Husky trunk tray, if you had little ones, you know, like you look in my ring bag and I have all the small ones that you would put like Cheerios in for Hudson. And I've had these for years and one is full of safety pins and one is full of braiding bands because you never know what's going to break at the ring. And the last thing you need is like a Ziploc bag full of braiding bands that's busted open and has exploded all over your ring bag. Yeah. We have Tupperwares everywhere and they're so great. We do have a lot of Tupperwares. Yeah. Right. So what about the trailer? Like today, Courtney, I know you were, you were driving the bus from Aiken to Tryon, right? So I think about all the time you guys spend on the road. I mean, how do you, you come home from a horse show, you unpack the trailer and then you repack it the next week for the next one. Right. So what are your tips on keeping the, your horse trailer organized with everything you need? Yeah. Yeah. We do a lot of this. So the big thing that I would say is like your essential stuff that's going to go to every horse show have a designated spot for it in your trunk or in your trailer, whether it's in a bag or, you know, if like, I've seen people go and get, um, the like outdoor storage things that you would see like in the pool section, um, or like home decor, you know, like outdoor lawn furniture type stuff. And that's where, um, you know, like their bridle racks and saddle racks and stuff like that. Like they go in those types of drawers in their trailer. So when you break down from a show, that's where that stuff goes. Like I, I just have a bag that like a duffel bag that was random that we won somewhere. And currently that now holds all of my bridle racks, all of my tack cleaning hooks. Basically it, it's like my fixture bag. Um, all of my hooks that I put on stall fronts for halters and that bag stays fairly near the front of the trailer. Um, but it stays up out of the way cause it's not something that leaves the trailer unless we're at a horse show. And then past that, I do a lot of the old school classic equine, like saddlebags that people used to travel with. Okay. And because then it's, you know, like all my boots, you know, so for instance, we're here at try on this week. So we're jumping in the arena footing all the time. So my boots should stay fairly dry and clean. It's not like cross country boots that are going to get covered in mud and run through the water jump and everything. So those boots, I pretty much can keep clean throughout the week, wiping them down with a damp towel or scrubbing them at the wash rack and hanging them to dry. So at the end of the week, they will all get rematched and all the clean boots go into one bag. And then all my dirty laundry goes into another. And like my scrims go into, you know, their own bag and my coolers that are clean. And so then you try to come home and go, okay, well, this is all, as I'm loading the trailer on Sunday, all of this stuff is clean. So it's going in these bags and it's going in the gooseneck of the trailer because I'm not going to have to pull it out when I get home. And then the big trunk and the buckets and all that stuff goes in. And then at the very front of my trailer, as soon as you open the tack room door would be dirty laundry that absolutely has to get washed in the next 24 hours. So towels, wraps, saddle pads, um, dirty laundry that isn't that important. So that would be if we were coming home from an event and then leaving for a jumper show. And that would then be cross country boots, dressage pads, cross country pads that we don't need the next week. 
and then feed buckets, small feed buckets for the horses at home that we make their breakfast and dinner in. So as soon as I get home that night, those three big ticket items can come out and then the laundry immediately goes in and I will have other bags kind of sitting there waiting. And typically what I do then too is like, if I have any downtime, I'll sit and I'll make a list of what size sheets and how many I have at the horse show and like what I would need for the next week. So that then I know, say for instance, this week we have seven horses here and next week I was only taking four. I would know, okay, of these seven sheets, I need to wash the 378s and 181 and the rest can go into a bag that's not important for the time being. And it's all about prioritizing. And then as soon as you get home, you make sure that that washing machine is running and that it gets switched. Like I'll set a timer on my phone so that I know the minute the laundry is finished and I can get it traded out and get another load in. And then too, you have to prioritize that. Like what can hang dry versus what can go in the dryer? Because you don't want to throw your saddle pads, the Echo Golds in last if you don't want to, or you're back on track wraps, if you're not going to put them in the dryer. You know, you can put your sheets in or your wraps or your towels in last because then you can chuck those in the dryer and the dryer can be running on hot and then you can yank them out and chuck them in a bag and that can be the last thing that goes in the trailer. But you don't want to put damp saddle pads in if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that does make sense. Man, you're like, a, like you've got it memorized. Like you just know <laughs> the motions, you know? Oh my goodness. I, I just need will Courtney say, sure to organize my life. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> just your barn. Just your barn. You don't want me to do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> so thinking about like an everyday basis, what are products for like cleaning and grooming? And I guess this is a question for everybody that you like cannot live without. Um, okay, wait, are we cleaning and grooming or are we still organizing? I gotta make sure my brain's right. Why don't you, yeah, oh, do sorry. cleaning and grooming first and then give us your organizing list. Okay. okay. You've got to have a good curry comb for cleaning and grooming horses. And I would say probably have two of some sort, you know, like have a proper rubber one for if you've got caked on mud and stuff like that. And then have a bit of a softer one for if you had a sensitive skinned horse or, you know, you just needed like a quick daily curry, not to really, really dig into their coats and a good hoof pick, like, you know, or one that's easy to get to. Like I said, once again, we're quite fortunate in Aiken that we're quite sandy, but I know when we get to North Carolina, the horses are going to pick a lot of stuff up in their feet in the mud. Um, if we've had any type of rain up there, it's just a whole different ball game. So those would be two things that I would say you definitely don't want to be without on a day-to-day basis and a good rag, like a good rub rag. That's not a huge full size towel, but also isn't like a washcloth size. Um, because especially like this time of year, we're getting to where the horses aren't super sweaty except for underneath their tack. And so while they might not be getting full baths, you really want to make sure that you can get like the sweat marks off behind their ears and around their eyes. And some horses get really weird if you come at them with a full size bath towel up around their face, but then sometimes the itty bitty washcloths like don't actually get the job done and they get gross really quickly. So you'll be washing a bunch of them way more frequently than if you did like a dish size towel. Um, yeah, that would probably be my things that are pretty close all the time. Um, yeah. And then my spray that I use everywhere that everyone always wants the recipe for the witch hazel spray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to like patent that. I feel like, right. (laughs) Yeah. What about like, how do you stay organized? Like, are you into like apps or anything like anything digital to help you like reminders or anything? Do you guys do that? So we actually have, this was, I don't know if it was Jess or Doug that found it, but the, um, Calengoo app in our phone and it syncs all of the Google calendars is huge because we can do the show schedule, the barn clinic schedule, Um, when people are on vacation, when new people start, when clients come in and stay for a week or so. And it's one, you know, like if we have a horse ship in, I can add what day it showed up. And then when Jessica's going through and doing, you know, billing or writing it down for herself, it's already in the app and she doesn't have to call me to find out, you know, Oh, when did this horse show up and blah, blah, blah. And when did so-and-so get their feet done and everything. Um, or like if, you know, a horse leaves and someone calls her or calls Doug, 
and they want to know when it got its feet done, when it got vaccinated, all this and that. And that's all great if we have it on our computers, but how often are any of us even in the house to have that information on hand? So it's yeah, nice to have that in the app. I don't know. What's I'm the name of the app again? Calengu. So it's C-A-L-E-N-G-O-O. Okay. Right? It's two O's? Yes. Two yeah. O's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that one's been, that honestly I think has been the biggest um, life changer as far as management goes that way. Um, I've tried some of the different apps, like the stable managers type things. And I don't know, we tried the, there was one that we tried to like upload everybody's Coggins into and do stuff like that. And, and it then didn't really work. Nobody, yeah. Yeah. No and then none it. of us really liked it. So that's, I don't know. I'm a big fan of old fashioned pen and paper. Like I love to have a planner or a calendar. I actually had Jessica get us a desk calendar that was like the big months and it was like one foot by two foot. And then anybody could go in. Like if you body clipped a horse, you went in and you wrote down that you clipped a horse that day and you just put it in the day square or, you know, if we had to call the farrier for something extra or whatever. And then everyone that worked for us had access to it. So if we were on the road and they clipped four different horses, they could write down who they clipped while we were gone. And that was actually really helpful from a group standpoint. And then I have my own planner that actually Jessica gave me this one because she, she's had such a that, hard time getting a planner. Have, <laughs> so I'm on my third one. Oh, wow. So it actually I have to have a paper it. planner and I ordered the wrong one. I ordered, it's a long story, but I had a really nice monthly planner that doesn't have daily. <laughs> so I was like, well, it's great. It's got lots of notes and everything else. And I had this really cool, like saying on the front of it. So I was like, Courtney, you want it? She's like, this is great. I'm like, well, here you go. Yeah. And so that, they that sent me to my answers. barn planner so, and yeah, it has it's been perfect. Yeah. But it's funny because it has her name on it. And then like 10 days later, the other new one showed up and it was still wrong. And so Doug goes to give it to me. He's like, well, Jessica wanted to know if you wanted this. And it's got their family photo on the front cover. Oh my God. And I'm like, no, I, I take like, that part of Photoshop part. me in. Like this is getting weird. <laughs> I was like, no, I take this part off and you have the other cover. She's like, oh. And I was like, they sent me the wrong inserts. They like resend it. I'm like, I'm literally on my third planner. Yeah. But oh that was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm very much an, a fan of the old school, like handwriting it down. And if I need to make any notes to myself, I just use the notes app on my phone. If you, if anyone were to open it, they'd find 9,000 packing lists for the last three years. But yeah, that's, that's how I do a lot of my packing list. <laughs> on lots of notes. Yep. Well, Courtney, thank you so much for joining us. I mean, man, I just like, I've been literally writing down what you're saying, taking notes, hoping to improve my own life around the barn. So this is all super helpful. No problem. Thank you guys for having me. It's been I, way too long. I know it's got to, we're, we're not going to go that long again. I promise you we'll find a, a way to get you back on. Very good. Yeah. Well, thank you guys again. And yeah, I guess I'll talk to y'all soon. All Perfect. right. I don't know if you guys have tried the soap for dirty equestrians, but they are vegan cruelty-free soaps. My personal favorite is the stressed out Amy. It's lavender scent, but they have so many great different soaps with some amazing different titles like level up upper level goals to you deserve this. All of the different soaps, all of them are great give them as a gift. I've done it where like there are these cute packagings and everything. You give them as fun little gifts for everybody. And you can shop all the different soaps at the heels down shop. So I told you guys we're like on the road. Everything's kind of crazy. How do you guys, and I'm finally like back riding a bunch of horses and working out at the same time. How do you deal with the soreness? Cause like, I'm definitely getting sore between working out like my back and my legs and everything. So what is your kind of favorite tips? Cause for me, I have to like keep my core strong to like not have my back completely like give out on me. So I've been doing a lot more core exercises, but I don't know. What are your tips? Oh, I don't know, Ellie. Do you have a, like a routine that you 
you use like ap- maybe after like a long horse show weekend or something? So I guess the real question would be, do you want to deal with your soreness in a productive way or in a way yes. that will help? <laughs> okay. Well, both. Is it both? I want both. Well, well, no, because there's very different things. So like if, if you take a fall, right? Like if I, if I'm breaking a baby and I, and I hit the dirt hard, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take probably more Advil than I should and drink a couple beers and I'm going to take a nap. But yeah. that's not really going to help my body. So, in But it does like, help. It does help. It does because help. Because you feel better. But it, yeah. Not the next day, though. No. No. I need no, something that's, to, like, long-term productive. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I try to do a lot of stretching. Like, especially recently, like, Matt and I have been doing a lot of trail rides. Um, and we did one that was like two hours long the other day and like my knees get really not like locked up if I'm not getting on and off the horse, you know? Um, so like when I got off, I did a lot of like stretching. So I, I don't know if I told you guys, but I, I went to a performing arts high school and I took yoga as actually a gym credit. Um, not which what? Really? Sure. That didn't have that when I was in school. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. And, and my teacher was like this really like cool lady. She was just really cool lady. But anyway, so I don't, I wouldn't call myself a good, um, yogi by any means. I just kind of do some stretches where I'm like, Oh, if that's painful, I'll keep stretching it for a little bit. But she did tell me that, um, farting is a spiritual release. So, I'm sorry, what? Um, <laughs> yeah, she said, so yeah, she said <laughs> she, one time she was leading us. I'm not in sure yoga, I'm okay with this one. And she farted and she was like, it's okay, guys. Farting is a spiritual release. So I think that when you're stretching, <laughs> if you allow wow. yourself to have those spiritual releases, uh, it helps. Oh, oh, wow. We're there. So there you <laughs> go, <laughs> about that. There you go. <laughs> you asked Ellie for her advice. Drink some beer and then fart the next day. <laughs> wow. Take some Advil, drink beer, and fart. Well, I'm, stretching. I mean, don't yeah. forget the stretch. Oh, oh I get I, it. I'm sorry. I forgot about the stretch. <laughs> How could I forget I get about what you're saying, Ellie. I get what you're saying. Yeah, you just kind of got to let your whole body get a little. It's it's like when horses get up from their roll and they do that shake. You know, you just got to let everything. Sometimes they fart, right? And they it's cough. A release. And, you're releasing you everything. Just, exactly. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I was going more down the yoga part, but I didn't know we were going that route. Well, my my yogi instructor did say that it's a spiritual release. So, oh, okay. Well, can't argue with the yogi. You're you're aligning your chakras when you do that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> just can't. Oh my gosh! All Maybe right. Justine well, has one that's more like <laughs> legitimate. I don't know I if mean, you can follow that up. I know. I was just gonna say. All right. I mean, I'm I'm down with your your system, Ellie. Like this, it works for me. But um. <laughs> I'm, I also like yoga, so I, I try to do yoga regularly, emphasis on try, but I do, when I'm like in a good mode and like and motivated and I'm doing it a lot, I do notice the difference in how it helps my riding for sure. It helps my core stay strong. It helps me recover faster on those days that I do feel sore, like after a hard cross country school or something. I'm also big on bubble baths. So with Epsom salts and oils and stuff like that. I'm so you know what I have baths. with both of those? Yeah. It's, I, maybe it's just cause I run 5,000 miles a minute in my head, but there's no way I can sit still for a bubble bath. You just can't. And yeah. the yoga and the yoga gets me so bored. I like want to sleep. So you're, you're like a, like, what do you, you like, like orange theory, like more fast paced workout routines? No, because then that kills my back. So I have to do like the medium. I'm really good at like the kind of bar. Like I love bar yeah, classes. Yeah. Bar is good. Bar like, so, and like Pilates, yeah. but like the yoga where they're like mm, the music, I'm like, man, I just need to take a nap. Like I can't but even, even like. Even when you're sore, that doesn't feel good because there are lots of yoga that's like very, you know, it's less spiritual and it's more like fitness motivated and it's quicker paced. No, even those, but it's not even very quick paced. Like that's the problem. Like it's, they stay and they want to stretch and they want to still listen to the calming music. But like all I can then think about are the 5,000 things I really should be doing instead of like, because in yoga for me, and maybe I just do the wrong ones. That's what I want the listeners to tell me because 
the Pilates is a little bit faster and it's not really that calming meditating music. Cause I think it's that I need like the pumped up music. Like I need to be like ACDC kind of going to get going, but not orange theory. So I need like that mixture. So I've been doing more bar classes and kind of like hit exercises, but not all the way to like orange theory. Cause that I have a really bad back, so I can't really do all of those exercises. So what, I'm trying what about to like just like a walk, you know, like, you know, and it's good the to- same thing. I'm kind of bored. Yeah, but you what if you walk podcast? and do something you need to do? Like, yeah. I mean, what if you take a bubble bath, but you're... I'm not going like, to lie. When we used to walk... Schedule, when... <laughs> no, I'm like, I'm just going to get out of the bath. I'm just going to keep going. And like, then we used to take walks like during COVID, Doug and I. But I'm not going to lie. We bring a beer. I don't think there's anything wrong with a beer. I don't, yeah. I don't so, think like, that's not really exercising when you're drinking. But you're I'm supposed like, to be recovering. Like, this is a recovering after being sore, right? You know, like, just, I think yeah, moving so at maybe. all when you're when yeah. you're that sore, just some mobility is good. I need also, something that's, like, quicker, but, like, yeah. I need I need the listeners to tell me, like, maybe it's, I think maybe it's the Pilates or something. Yeah. Maybe I, need I, think more, I think it's more stretching, but, like, only for four minutes, not... 40 minutes of yoga. <laughs> well, I think the biggest thing too, that like, you know, has to happen both before, during, and after, you know, a long ride or a workout is the biggest thing is hydration, right? Yeah. If you're not, the water, if, not the beer. Right. Yep. So, I mean, the beer is post, post your water intake, you know? Yeah. yeah. Because that's the thing. That's, like, I mean, that's a good one. Cause your muscles, they just like, Oh, I hate when they get all locked up and tight and it's uh, water. Mm-hmm. I think like as much as I, I personally don't like, like I like my water, like at my barn cause it's well water and it tastes really good to me, but like other water, I'm like, Oh, this tastes like earth. Oh, or something. I like, have a trick just... for that. Put a little bit of lemon juice in it. Hmm. Okay. It's it so makes good. Gross water. Good. It makes gross water. Good. Some ice and some lemon juice. It will make gross water. Good. What about and like so, and it just changes water. it up because we like it's like I don't drink soda, I don't drink kind of anything else. So it's like coffee, water, and I to drink a lot of tea, not coffee these days. But to change it up when I get bored and I feel like in the summertime I'm not drinking enough, I do like lemon water, or something to kind of change it up so that I still drink a ton. Cause I am actually pretty good at drinking water. I just have to remember, but like, so makes me think, Oh, if I do a little squirts of lemon juice, it's good. But Jess, would you like go get a massage? Like, oh, are so you know, that? Yeah. But COVID killed me. Yeah. Yeah. That's what makes me recover the fastest is massages. Mm-hmm. Like that is yeah. the ticket. So I'm not going to lie. My mom had this thing called, it looks like a thumper or whatever. And that is <laughs> oh, how what? I actually, it's like this thumping machine. It looks like a gun. It's like a <laughs> massage gun. And it Oh, I know what you're talking about. Oh, it's amazing. That's how I pro- that's how I deal with I cheat and do that with my back. When I really should be like doing my core and everything to keep it strong cuz I tore everything in my back years ago. So, my mom got this thing and then Doug and I ordered it and that was like our splurge during quarantine was this gun and that that does really help with my soreness the most but that was like my extra splurge and it's right. awesome because i can't even get massages you can't do any of that right now i'm too yeah, scared to at least i'm like still haven't got my nails done or anything so massages one, are off the table one day one day you'll go back one day one day but i think these are some great tips i'm gonna have to like do some of yeah let us know which the ones farting, keep your mostly. you know yeah. Yeah, not the bubble bass. But yes, everything else. The farting number one. <laughs> or that. I can't. I can't do that one. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. It's time for Rose and Thorn. And we have another listener with us this week. Uh Rebecca Blake, who's from Louisiana. Hey, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for joining us. We're excited to have you. I'm excited to be here. So I see you have a really cute chestnut. That's your horse. Is he that, a thoroughbred? Yeah, it is. Uh, she, it's a mare. She oh. is a little, little over seven. And um, I've had her just about three years. 
and it's been quite a journey with her. So she, she is very cute. I'm also obviously very partial to chestnuts. So <laughs> um, she wasn't what I was originally looking for, but she kind of fell in my lap and I don't regret it. So um, what do you do with her? We do a little bit of everything because we haven't quite found our discipline and I have a feeling I may have an endurance horse on my hands. Oh, wow. Which I'm not entirely opposed to. You know, I, I'm an old pony clubber <laughs> from way, way, way back. And I took a break when I had my son and he's grown and flown. So she kind of came in to the mix and I was like, let's just see what she wants to do. So, and she does not like dressage. She kicks at the white fence the whiteboards and the dressage. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I don't think we're dressage riders or eventers because of that. But she loves going out on the trails for hours. So I think I oh, have an, yeah. a, an endurance horse on my hands. And that's okay. I think that'll be fun. That sounds fun to me. I've always wanted to try it. All right. Who wants to start with Rose and Thorn? Jess, Ellie, do you guys, are you I ready? I can start. All right, go for it. Okay, so my rose is that a couple weeks ago we went and checked on the farm and it's getting really, really close. So I'm so excited. I'm still not saying a date yet because I'll believe it when I see it, but it is getting close is all I can say. And there seems to be a little, little light at the end of the tunnel, which I'm pretty sure was like non-existent for so long. So the fact we might actually be moving into North Carolina soon is amazing. Oh my gosh. Then, I'm excited for you. Yeah. I can't wait. It's looking so good. I'm just like, I feel like it's going to be Christmas when I open up our pod. That's been like five years. It's like all of our uh, wedding gifts. I like, don't even know what's in there. Oh my God. The only thing, <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I know that's in there is my amazing sofa that I've been waiting on. Oh my gosh. Like we, yeah, we have the most incredible couch that we thought, oh, we'll see it in four months. Yeah. Six, six years later, jokes on us. <laughs> oh, and wow. so that is my rose is that I might actually get to see all my stuff again. And then my thorn, I kind of mentioned earlier in the podcast, but I know this is like not supposed to really be a thorn and I'm being like, hundred percent a baby about it, but I am dying with this whole COVID thing. And like, we don't, we don't really go anywhere. Like we still, like we go to all these horse shows and everything else. So like, yes, but we try to be really safe about everything and I probably need to get over it, but my nails and toes are struggling like <laughs> straight up. And like, that is my thorn is that like, I keep like, breaking my fingernails because there's nothing to be done and like is they're awful and that's yeah i'm gonna be that person that's my that's my thorn for sure this week oh my gosh <laughs> so yes i know that it's first world problems and i should have a lot more problems and i'm sure i do and i know i do but like all i can think about is my stupid fingernails so that's just what's killing me right now <laughs> i hear you i hear you <laughs> we horse I mean, people don't hey, know the how horse to groom people. ourselves. We just well, no, I go get them need done, but like COVID's <laughs> killing me, man. I know. Ugh. And I just got another like I my nail grew a little bit too long, and it snagged on something, and that's why I guess that's like what's like the instant reminder is when you get the nail that's like super oh. super short, so it's like stinging all the time. So I just think about it all day long. How annoying my fingers are right now. You need to make cosmetology friends. I know. Well, I bought my do-it-yourself kit. That was another interesting, terrible idea, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Just say it. Uh, all right, Somebody Ellie. Else's turn. <laughs> um, okay. So my rose is that I am going to a rain cow horse clinic in the middle of October. So I was really bummed, obviously, when my Buck Brandeman clinic got, I'm not going to say canceled, postponed. 
due to COVID. So I found this one to go to, which is really exciting. It's close to home. And so I'm excited to get my horses out on the property. But then there's the thorn side of it, which is I don't have an arena to ride in right now. So I'm trying to get my horses (laughs) prepped for this clinic. And they're basically just doing lots of trail riding and hill work, which is good for them, but not really going to be helpful with the maneuvers they're going to need for cow horse work. So that is my rose and my thorn. But I'm excited to go to this thing, but probably going to have to take lots of walk and breaks and sit out of some stuff. Can you haul to like a friend's farm for now or like where there's an arena, like maybe at least once a week or something? Yeah, so I can do that because I just got my trailer fixed, but it still only gives us like two weeks, you know, yeah. and I don't want to put the pressure on any of them. And it's just, it's a lot of thorns this week because Batman was lame yesterday. So I'm like, well, does he even want to go? Maybe we should just like, because I don't, I don't want to push it. So I might just take Q, who is my baby. And I don't know. I don't know. I might go to a clinic. I might not just gonna (laughs) just gonna try to see what the the end of september brings let's just say that oh i hear you what about you justine well i had something slightly similar for my thorn mikey came up like not lame but just like not himself like we went cross-country schooling and he was great he was fabulous he was wonderful we had a great day And then, you know, you get that dreaded text from the barn manager who's like, hey, he's backing off his feet. I don't know what's wrong, you know. And so began like a several day period of trying to diagnose what was wrong. And he had like one weird fat hind leg. And I was thinking, oh, is it cellulitis? He didn't have a fever. It wasn't like painful to touch. The swelling would go away and then come back. And eventually the vet, you know, the vet came out. We just like hit him with antibiotics for several days and some steroids. And he's like magically fine now. So we're not really sure. Like she, the vet thinks it was probably like low grade cellulitis, but it was, um, it was just weird. You know, I hate those things where you're like, and he was never like sick, sick where you're like, do I wait this out or do I call the vet now? You know what I mean? It's like, it was one of those like toss up ones. Like, he would eat sometimes in the morning, but then not eat at night, you know? And then, so then you're thinking he was getting better, and then the swelling would go away, and, but, um, anyways, the antibiotics seem to just, like, zap whatever it was, so he seems better now, which is good. That's That's great. Why do you like these animals? (laughs) I know, and I'm still just, like, waiting for the vet bill in the mail, I'm like, this is great, just to, you know, like, mystery, one week off, you know? Yeah. But my rose is probably that the weather is finally getting better. <laughs> like, it's really exciting that the weather is getting better. I so, know. I'm just so tired it. of the rain. Knock on wood, we're almost out of hurricane season. Like, we're getting closer to the end. Like it's right. It's you, might actually, you might actually be able to ride and not be underwater. Exactly. So... Like, I already put up all my fall and Halloween decorations in my house. It's not even October yet. You did? Yes, because I needed it. I needed it. Oh, my god! I needed it. I need to come home and be like, oh, my gosh, it's almost fall. I need this. (laughs) I think COVID has jump-started the uh, Halloween and fall festivities. I've definitely already watched Hocus Pocus. Wow. Okay. I haven't gotten there yet, but I'm getting there. Oh, I was there. Three beers there and I was there. <laughs> well, what about you, Rebecca? What's your rose and thorn? So I'll start with my thorn, um, which is, unfortunately, I have an MCL tear because apparently oh, no. dismounting my horse was an issue for me about a month ago. And I'm still healing and I'm a little annoyed. It just is what it is. I'm not 20 anymore, so... It's healing and doing what it needs to do, and it is what it is, but I'm a little annoyed. And my rose actually happened over the weekend. A family member who worked for Kodak sent me an email confirming my address, and they're like, I have something to send you. Didn't know what it was. 
what he had found going through some boxes, slides from when I got my first pony. Like back in, back in the 70s. That tells you how old I am. And some of the pictures aren't that great. Um, and there's an app you can actually put on your iPhone where you can scan slides so you can get the picture. And some of them, I mean, I laughed because I was an awfully nerdy child, but I got these <laughs> pictures of me and my first pony and it was just really heartwarming. And I it was a really nice surprise, you know, with, with COVID this year and everyone's lives getting turned upside down. It was just something really nice to, to get. And probably won't print them out, but you now there's a couple that are very sweet. And, that uh, is really sweet. Aww, yeah. That's, yeah. You know, it's just been such an awful year for so many people. And it was just something nice. That and yes, the weather is getting better. I'm loving it. So. <laughs> well, awesome. Well, thank you, Rebecca, for joining us. It was fun. Yes, thank you. So I don't know if you guys saw the post in our Facebook group from Sydney. She had this dream about, you know, wanting to get back into showing in derbies. And she had had this bad experience before and her confidence was just really not what it used to be. But she'd posted about it in the group and someone actually named Susan shipped a shad belly to her to borrow from New Jersey all the way to Chicago. And she rode in her first what she called a mini hunter derby and she redeemed herself. I think she got second even is what I saw on the post. But she just wanted to thank everybody in the community. And it's just, I thought it was just a great story to hear how, you know, this podcast has helped bring riders together in such a helpful way. Because I feel like online, it's so, it's hit or miss. You're either going to get a bad group or a good group, you know? Definitely. No, I thought that it was so sweet that she even shared it with us, you know, how how these two ladies were connected and how she was able to step back in the show ring like she wanted. Like it made my eyes water a little bit reading it. I was so happy for her. <laughs> so we're happy for you, Sydney. Keep on, keep on trucking. Your pony is adorable. <laughs> we loved it. we love the Facebook group. Thank you guys so much for posting this and everybody, please post more stories about this and why you love our group because we love seeing different stories like this and how everybody comes together. So we're so thankful for that. And if you have a question or a story you want us to share on the show, you can always send us an email by going to hello at heelsdownmedia.com or you can join our super wonderful Facebook group, which is the Heels Down Happy Hour Podcast Lounge. And if you want to hear more from us in general, you should subscribe to the Heels Down Brief. Definitely do it now if you want to get more tips from Courtney about how to clean up your barn. You can do that by going to bit.ly slash hdbrief. And we want to say thank you to our partners this week, Eco Gold and Soap for Dirty Equestrians. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Cheers. 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 Cheers.